Hi everyone, or as my Web3 friends like to say, GM. I'm Victoria, and I'm going to show you how to create and verify your very own NFT collection on Solana. So we are going to go over two ways to do it. The first way we'll touch on very quickly, and it is how to make your own NFT collection without any code. You'll basically be minting the NFTs yourself. And then the second way that I'll show you is how you'll create a minting dApp where other people can come and mint the NFTs. We'll also go through the pros and cons of both solutions. And then I will also show you how to make your collection look legit. So how to make your collection have a photo, have a name and a verified creator. We have quite a lot to cover. So this is going to be really exciting and hope you stick with me for the video. So meet the caviar cavalier club this is a series of very cute little digital cavaliers all drawn by my sister and we are going to use them for this example right now they are very simple jpegs and there's no metadata associated with them so we are going to transform these simple jpegs into proper nfts on solana but first before we start i want us to have a look at an existing NFT collection on Solana. So over here is OK Bears. And as you can see, the NFTs of OK Bears, it's not just a JPEG. There is all this metadata associated with it and information about the collection. So this is information that we need to add to our Cavaliers to make it look like a more legit collection and make the NFT not just an image. So now I'm going to touch very quickly on the first way to create NFTs. And this is the way without any code. So what you can do is go to a tool like Solsi and connect your wallet. Then once you're there, you can create your own collection. It's absolutely no code and you can just enter information about your collection, like the title, a description and other interesting metadata that you want people to see about your collection. You can also include information on, on all your social profiles and then basically create the collection. Soulseed then also lets you create NFTs for that collection. So you can upload all your individual images. At this point, you saw that the Caviar Cavalier Club has five Cavaliers. So I would have to upload each of those individually and mint those as NFTs. Now for each of these images, I can give them a title, give it a description, and add that metadata that you saw OK Bears had. And then I can also associate it with the correct collection and mint it. Now, this is a very good solution if you just have a small collection and you just want something quick and easy. However, it does have its downsides. When you mint the NFT and actually put it on the Solana blockchain, the person minting has to pay a gas fee. That's okay. Solana's gas fees are pretty cheap, so it's okay for one small NFT. However, if you are creating a large collection, you're going to have to be paying gas for all of those NFTs. So it doesn't really scale very well. So what a lot of big projects do is create their own minting dApp, which is essentially a web page that someone can go to and mint an NFT. And so the person minting pays the gas rather than the collection owner. For collections that are 10,000 big, that saves the collection owner a lot of gas because they don't have to pay any of the individual gas fees. This is the exa example that I really want to spend this tutorial on because I think it's the more scalable solution if you're selling a large NFT collection. Here's a demo of what this looks like. You can see this minting dApp and you can see how many are remaining. Um, this is a snapshot of what our finished product will look like. And so you can see there are five Caviar Cavaliers selling and each of them are being sold for 0.01 sol. Don't worry, I will go through how to create that. Anyways, we can mint the NFT and create our very own Caviar Cavalier Club. And so as you can see from this transaction, me as the person minting, actually pays the gas in order to get the NFT and the creator does not. 
but we will go through all of this in a lot more detail. Okay, so let's build this minting dApp together. The first thing we want to do is install the Solana CLI tool. This is a very helpful tool because it allows us to interact with the Solana blockchain directly from our computer. So we can uh, interact with it using our, the terminal on our computer. Head over to the Solana CLI tool installation page and you'll be able to see the script that you need to install it. We copy that script and then paste it in our terminal. We can start to install the Solana CLI. A path shows up when we run this command. So let's also run that path to make sure that we are saving it and the Solana CLI tool will work. Now, once the Solana CLI tool is installed, we'll be able to run all the Solana commands directly from our command line. One of the most useful commands is Solana config get. This tells us information about the environment we're using when making requests using the Solana CLI tool. The two most important fields here are the RPC URL and the key pair path. The RPC URL tells us what environment we're calling. So are we calling the Solana DevNet or are we calling the Solana Mainnet? And then the key pair tells us which wallet we're basically running these commands from. You might be confused, what is this uh, wallet that's being used? So that was the one that I was previously using on the Solana CLI tool. Now, what we actually want to do is create our own wallet. Let's create our own wallet and set our key pair path to that new wallet. There are different types of wallets that you can use with Solana. The wallet that we are going to use for the sake of this tutorial is a file system wallet. This means that the private key and public key, the key pair is stored on your computer. I personally do not use a file system wallet because I'm quite security conscious. So I use a hardware wallet. I use a ledger. So the private key is stored on my own device and never on my computer. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just do it all on the file system wallet. Let's create our very own file system wallet. And again, the Solana documentation has information on how to create this. So if we head over there, and we can see the commands to create a new file system wallet. So all we need to do is specify the location we want that key pair to be written to. You can choose whatever location you want, but this is the one I am going to choose. And I'm going to make it very clear that it's for the Caviar Cavalier Club. So I'll save it as ccc.json. You'll notice that once we create this file system wallet, you'll see a seed phrase printed on the terminal. Now this seed phrase is extremely important. It is essentially like your private key. So do not share it with anyone. If someone gets access to your seed phrase, they can have access to your wallet and steal your funds. So keep it very private. But this is just a tutorial. So for now, I'm going to write it down and I will delete this key pair once the tutorial is over. Now we actually want to make sure that our Solana CLI tool is using the correct wallet, the one that we just created. So we can run the Solana config set command and change the key pair file path to our new key pair. So ccc.json in this case. And so let's do that and make sure that we have the right wallet selected. Because if you just run the command Solana address, you can see the address that the Solana CLI tool is currently using. And we can make sure that it matches the address that was printed above when we created the Solana wallet. Right now, our wallet has absolutely no funds because we just created it. But because we are on the DevNet, which we will use for the, this uh, tutorial, we can airdrop ourselves some soul, which is very easy. Let's run the airdrop command and give ourselves one soul, which is plenty and enough to upload our Caviar Cavalier Club collection. And we can check the balance by running Solana balance just to make sure that we have the correct amount of soul. Okay, so now that we have the Solana CLI tool set up and created our wallet, we can now get into creating our dApp. But before we do, I really want to talk about Metaplex. Metaplex is the NFT standard on Solana, and it also has a whole series of tools that makes it easy to launch NFT projects. And with Metaplex, we're going to use something called the candy machine. If we head over to the Metaplex documentation, we can see information 
about what the NFT standard looks like on Solana. So this shows the metadata that is associated with an NFT. And you saw this briefly before when we looked at OK Bears, but this is a closer look of the information that should be attached to an NFT. So you can see that there is a name, there's a symbol associated with it, a description that the NFT has, and then attributes, the image that the NFT has, and a lot more other information. And over here is an example of what the NFT metadata looks like in JSON format. And so this is what we need to create for each of our Caviar Cavaliers. In order to create those JSON files and that metadata, let's use a text editor. I usually use VS Code. Over here, I've already installed VS Code and I'm going to drag over my folder of all my Caviar Cavalier images into VS Code. And now I can see all of the Caviar Cavaliers labeled. One tip about the candy machine is that all the images should be numbered and their associated JSONs should have the same number. I am just going to show you the example for creating one of the JSON files. So I copied the JSON folder over from Metaplex's documentation, and now I'm going to edit it with information about my Caviar Cavalier. Here I've given my NFT a name, and I've given it a description. I've said which image is associated with it, but because this is 0.json, I'm going to associate 0.png with it. And then I can add other information like the URL to my website, caviarcavalierclub.com. And I'm also going to add traits associated with this NFT collection. There are also properties that I can set. So I'm going to say that, it, that this is a PNG image and make sure that the category is also image. And finally, I'm going to set the creator. So I'm going to use the wallet address of the wallet I just created, because this is what I want to be the official creator for the Caviar Cavalier Club. And I'm going to give myself 100% of the share because I am the only creator. And so this means that if there are any royalties from secondary sales, I will get 100% of that money. For the sake of time, I have gone and added JSON files for each of the five Caviar Cavalier Club images. I also spiced up the traits a bit more just to make it a little more fun, but the rest of the content still matches what you saw in my tutorial. And as I mentioned previously, each of the JSON folders, the image that is used should match the number that is used on the PNG file. One thing I did notice with Metaplex's documentation is that on their official NFT standard, they include a symbol, but in their example, they didn't. So let's make sure we add that in too. Finally, we are ready to start creating our minting dApp. So for this, we are going to use Candy Machine. I want you to imagine an old school candy machine, one where you put in a coin and you receive any one of the candies that is in the machine. Well, a minting dApp works exactly like that. You pay a bit of soul and you are going to receive one of the NFTs that is in the candy machine. And it's completely random. So there's no way to game it. You don't know which of the NFTs you are going to receive. And as I mentioned before, the great thing about building a minting dApp is that every time an NFT is minted, the person minting pays the gas to actually create the NFT. The only gas you pay as a creator is getting your candy machine and collection up and running. In order to set up the candy machine, there are a bunch of things that you will need to install. Thankfully, Metaplex has really good documentation and will tell you what you need to install here. So I won't do that in this tutorial. Let's head over and clone the Metaplex directory. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna create a new directory myself and I'm gonna call that CCC for Caviar Cavalier Club and everything I do is gonna be stored in there. So within my Caviar Cavalier Club directory, I'm going to clone Metaplex. If I list now in the directory, I can see Metaplex was created and I can see that all the folders that I need are there. Fantastic. Okay, so now let's bring over our new Caviar Cavalier Club folder into our text editor. And as you can see, all the folders we need are there. We can head over and find the candy machine CLI path 
It is under Metaplex JS CLI. And within this folder, there is a config file. And this is what we'll use to configure our settings for our candy machine. Metaplex's site has a lot of information on how we can set our configuration for our candy machine. Over here are a bunch of fields that we can change. For instance, we can change the price. So we can set the actual price that you would have to pay to buy one of the NFTs in the candy machine. We can specify how many NFTs are in this candy machine. There's a gatekeeper, which is good for stopping bots from accessing the candy machine. But for this tutorial, we won't use it. And there are a lot of other fields like where, which address the candy machine mint fee should be sent to, when the candy machine goes live, and more whitelist settings. I will make a whole video on whitelisting, so stay tuned for that. But for this tutorial, we will not include any whitelisting. And then finally, we can also specify the storage solution. So where the actual image of the Caviar Cavalier will be stored. So Candy Machine has a tool that helps us upload that image. And so the storage solution we're going to use for this tutorial is Rweave. Now let's head over to our config file and set the information we need. So over here, I'm going to set the price of the Caviar Cavalier Club to 0.01 sol. And then I will set the number to five because there are only five in this tutorial. And then I'm gonna make sure that the sole treasury account matches the wallet that I created so that me as the Caviar Cavalier Club owner gets the fees that people spend when they mint NFTs. And then next I will set the go live date. I'm gonna just pick a date in the past so that we can already start minting. I will set the storage to our weave soul because we are going to use soul in order to fund uploading the images to our weave. And finally, I will rename the config file to config.json. So it's a bit more human readable. Okay, now that we have the configuration set up for candy machine, let's upload our images. But first, let's make sure our images are in the correct location in our um, in our Caviar Cavalier Club directory. Before, I had stored them just in a separate image folder, and now I'm going to pull it over into the Assets folder so that Canny Machine will be ready to upload them. Now our NFTs are in the right location in our directory, and we have configured our Canny Machine. We can actually start creating it. So the way to create it is to run Metaplex's upload command. The first thing to do is head over to the JS directory. Then we want to npm install so that we make sure we have all the dependencies. One thing I noticed when I first did it is I needed to include legacy peer depths. And so let's quickly install that and make sure we have the project and everything working. So the upload command does multiple things under the hood. It initializes a candy machine instance for the person calling it. So the Caviar Cavalier Club will have an instance of the candy machine. It also uploads all the images that we had in the assets folder into our weave. And we are paying with Sol to do it, um, hence using our weave Sol. So let's run this command and copy it over. And as you notice, there are other fields that are being set. The dash E just sets which environment we're using. And so for this, as I said, we're using the devnet. Then the dash K specifies the path to the key pair file that is running this command. We want our candy machine to be owned by the wallet we created, which is the creator wallet. So let's use ccc.json. The config file sets where the path to the config file we just created, which is information about the candy machine, like the price, the number in the collection and everything like that. And finally, the dash C flag sets the cache name. So this, the cache stores information about the candy machine that is created and the assets that were, are uploaded. So we will take a look at that in a second. Now let's run the command. And as you can see, the candy machine is being initialized. And so over here, we finally things are printed and we can see the instance of the candy machine that was created. 
let's check our Solana balance. As you notice, the balance went down a little bit from one sol because that was the amount of um, gas that we had to pay to create an instance of the Kenny machine and upload the five images to our weave. Now this Kenny machine information is very important. So make sure you save it. And so I'm gonna copy it over and save it to my little notes folder. When I created the Kenny machine, it actually interacted with Metaplex's Kenny machine contract. So if I go and look at the Kenny machine instance address that was created, I can now see it in SolScan under the DevNet and see that it is owned by Candy Machine and that I just ran the command, which is awesome. We can actually see that what we ran on the CLI tool being showed on the blockchain on the DevNet. And as I mentioned previously, the cache file is what is generated that shows us information about the Candy Machine we just created. So over here, I can see the Candy Machine address and I can also see all the assets that were uploaded as part of this candy machine. So I have five caviar cavaliers. And so all of these caviar cavaliers are listed here and I can see their Rweave link. You will notice that they are on chain, but they are not yet verified. So I will show you how to verify them in a bit. Great, let's copy that Rweave link and head over to it. Now you can see that the metadata that was in the JSON file is now stored on our weave. And we can see the associated image that was also uploaded because that itself is an our weave link. So if we head over and grab that PNG link, go to the URL. There we go. We can also see the image, our very own Caviar Cavalier Club on our weave, which is fantastic. Now, as I just mentioned, the cache file did say that the images and the metadata is not yet verified. So let's make sure we do that. We'll head over to the verified upload command on the Candy Machine um, documentation and run that. And so this will make sure, just double check that everything was uploaded. As I said, Metaplex is a very helpful tool. So it lets us just double check everything before we actually create NFTs from them. Great, to run the verify command, I'm gonna put in the similar inputs as before, the environment, the key pair, and the cache name. So we know which one to read from. Wonderful, okay, so now I can see that the five were are verified. And if I go and double check in the cache file, I can see that the Boolean value verify run is now true. And that means I am ready to start minting. Right now, what we have are our images and metadata stored on our weave, and we have an instance of a candy machine. But those caviar cavaliers are not yet NFTs. In order to make them NFTs, they need to be minted. There are two ways they can be minted. They can either be minted through the command line, or they can be minted via a minting dApp. We are going to do a minting dApp because it is a lot more user friendly, and so, Let's head over to Metaplex's, the same directory and find the Candy Machine UI. Metaplex has already created a very simple minting dApp that we can use. And the only thing we need to do to update it is to update the .n file and make sure we insert the name of our Candy Machine instance into that file. The Candy Machine instance can be found either in that notes document that we shared earlier or it can be found in the cache file. So once the .n file is set up, we can run the candy machine. So we can just run the command yarn start. And so this is what the candy machine UI looks like. In order to use it, someone needs to connect their wallet first. Now, I am going to use a different wallet for the candy machine UI because my ccc.json file system wallet that I created is the Caviar Cavalier collection owner. But the person who's actually minting usually has a, has a different wallet. They are someone else. You might not know who they are. So I wanna make sure that I'm minting using a different account from the collection owner. So for this, I'm just going to use my Phantom Test wallet. So let's connect to that. And over here, as you can see, this is my Phantom Test wallet and I have enough soul. So I'm going to mint. 
I can see that there are five Caviar Cavaliers to be minted and each for 0.01 Sol. And within the Phantom browser extension, I can also see uh, the transactions that will happen and I can approve them. So over here, let's approve it and mint our very own Caviar Cavalier. Great, this is done. So if I head over, I've minted that, uh, my Caviar Cavalier, I can see my collectible in my Phantom wallet. And awesome, now this is actually an NFT, Cavalier Theodore Duke. And we can see a description about this NFT and also see interesting metadata associated with it, which is fabulous. And you will also notice that now the candy machine also has only four items remaining, um, which is great. It shows that it worked as intended. Now let's actually take a look at what this NFT looks like on SoulScan. So let's head over to that and I can see all my attributes there being showed. And these are the attributes that live in that Arweave JSON file. And I can also see the creators. And finally, I can also see the royalties. For now, I only set the royalties to zero. Amazing. Now we have our very own Caviar Cavalier NFT on the DevNet. But as you might have noticed, the collection name seems strange. It doesn't show Caviar Cavalier Club, and so that doesn't look very legit. So now I'm actually going to show you how, as the NFT um, collection owner, you can create the Caviar Cavalier collection that all those NFTs will be associated with. Metaplex, if you head over to their documentation, has um, a very helpful tool that lets you create a collection. So let's head over to that. And here is the collection page, so we can connect our wallet. However, just a quick note, you'll notice that this collection page is on the UI, but the wallet that we use to create our NFT collection is on our file system. So I really want to be able to use that wallet with my browser. In order to do that, let's import the wallet that we created on a file system into our browser. To do that, we need our private key. And the easiest way to get it is just cat the folder and get this number. And then from the Phantom extension, I usually use Phantom, but there are other wallets you can use. You can import the private key. And let's just set this to the Caviar Cavalier Club. And as I already mentioned, be so careful with your private key. If someone gets access to your private key, it's as simple as that. They can copy paste, import a private key and steal your funds, so be extremely careful. But this is just a tutorial. Let's head over and create our collection. So let's connect our wallet, and then we can start putting information about the collection. So I want my collection to be called Caviar Cavalier Club, and I want my collection to have a very specific cover image. So let me upload that, and then I want a general description for my collection. Finally, I want to be able to import the NFTs that I have already minted and associate them with my collection. The best way to do that is to head over to the NFT and look for the first verified creator. This is the creator in the NFT that has 0%. So let's go to that account and copy that address. It takes a moment because it is searching for all the NFTs for that creator. And right now we only have one NFT created. So there's only one F NFT that appears but I can go ahead and create my official collection for that one NFT that we've created. And I will make sure in the browser extension to use the wallet of my Caviar Cavalier Club collection owner. So the one that I just imported. Metaplex does charge 0.01 Sol to create the collection and then also a little bit of Sol to associate NFTs with that collection. Okay, great. So now I can see my collection was created and I can see an address for that collection. So if I head over to SoulScan, I can even see that address on the DevNet. So let's look that up. And wonderful. This is an um, the NFT overview for our Caviar Cavalier Club collection. Most importantly, if I now go to Phantom and go onto my other account, I can see that it's under a proper collection. It is now called Caviar Cavalier Club. And if I click into it, I can see it, the same NFT is still there. So this looks a lot more legit for people who buy your NFTs. 
great, this looks amazing, but what happens if we mint again? Let's mint another NFT from my other Phantom Wallet account. So I'm gonna mint one of the four remaining and let's see what that looks like on Phantom. Okay, so now there are three remaining and let's look at the NFT that was minted. Ah, oh, such a shame. It doesn't go under the Caviar Cavalier Club because we still, as the creator, have not associated that new NFT with the R collection. But let's take a let's take a quick look at our new NFT, Martha Singleton. How cute! In order to associate that new NFT with the collection again, we can reselect our Caviar Cavalier Club wallet on the browser and head over. This time, we don't need to create another NFT collection because that was already created. But what we do need to do is add any new NFTs and associate them with that collection. So again, we'll grab the first verified creator of the NFT. This is the same across all the NFTs minted by the same candy machine. Let's go back to our testing wallet, the one that minted the NFTs. And great, I can now see that both NFTs live under Caviar Cavalier Club. Unfortunately, as the creator, you will need to keep doing this as more NFTs are minted with the candy machine. Finally, the last step in making your NFT collection look more legit is that we want to make sure that both creators are verified. So if you look right now in the NFT collection, the main address or our creator address is still unverified. So the final step is let's sign our NFTs. Metaplex has another tool that lets us do this, the sign all tool. Similar inputs as before, dash E for DevNet, dash K for the Caviar Cavalier Club wallet file path, and dash C for our cash file. So when we run this command, we will make sure that us as the creator are signing the NFT and so we'll become a verified creator. So let's run that command right now. Great, so it's found two NFTs and verified them. If I go back to SoulScan and refresh, I can now see that both creators are verified and this makes our collection look more legit. Amazing. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it to the end of the video. I really hope it was helpful. I'm Victoria and I'll be making a lot more videos on Solana and on blockchain dev in general. Please subscribe and stay updated on all the content that is to come. Thank you.